Okay, this uh, little tutorial on the poem Mammoth's Wood by Owen Shears. And I'll start off by just reading through the whole poem. For years afterwards, the farmers found them, the wasted young, turning up under their plough blades as they tended the land back into itself. A chit of bone, the china plate of a shoulder blade, the relic of a finger, the blown and broken bird's egg of a skull, all mimicked now in flint, breaking blue and white across this field, where they were told to walk, not run, towards the wood and its nesting machine guns. And even now the earth stands sentinel, reaching back into itself, for the reminders of what happened like a wound working a foreign body to the surface of the skin. This morning, twenty men buried in one long grave, a broken mosaic of bone linked arm in arm, their skeletons paused mid-dance macabre in boots that outlasted them, their socketed heads tilted back at an angle and their jaws, those that have them, dropped open as if the notes they had sung have only now with this unearthing slipped from their absent tongues. Okay, the first thing to point out about this poem is it's a poem written about World War I and a specific uh, battle and a specific moment in that battle um, of World War I during the Battle of the Somme, uh, which was an attack on uh, Mamet's Woods trying to capture a wooded area because it was a useful strategic position. Um, and the other thing is important to take note of is Owen Shears is a contemporary poet. He's about 40. Um, he obviously didn't live through the First World War or the Second World War, um, but he is concerned with, I suppose, or focused on uh, the memories of of those wars uh, and their meaning for us as readers today. So he's memorialising um, soldiers who died in the First World War but from a modern uh, viewpoint. And indeed the poem is about him visiting Mamet's Wood where obviously um, it's it's actually farming land as a lot of the land still is that the, um, the Battle of the Somme took place on and it's about um, the fact that these French farmers still dig up um, body parts, remains of World War One soldiers quite regularly and bits of bullet and, and things. So if you go to those battlefields as I know many history students of Morsham do, um, you, know, you can actually buy sort of bullet casings and things like that. But this is a moment where um, a regiment of Welsh soldiers who died were found, um, their skeletons altogether unearthed by uh, some French farmers. Okay, obviously another important thing to note about this poem is Owens is Welsh and the many of the soldiers who died, 600 of soldiers who died trying to capture this wood uh, were Welsh soldiers. So in a way he's memorialising um, his nation and the part that it played in World War One, which was in many respects forgotten about. Okay, so uh, there was an unacknowledged sacrifice that these these particular men uh, suffered at this particular moment in the battle, uh, and he's I suppose going over the importance of that battle and, and that memory and that sacrifice. I suppose what I've written at the top, uh, foreign and homely, under the two words Mamet's wood. Just the title of the poem reminds us through language that these soldiers were displaced from their home. Um, the word wood is quite comforting. It reminds us of, you know, England is an English word, but it's juxtaposed with that um, foreign name for the wood, Mamets, um, which obviously reminds us that these Welsh soldiers were a long way from home and they died in an alien and, and foreign place, even though uh, it looked similar to home. As is often the case, I always look at the opening line of, of a poem because the way that the poet introduces ideas is very, very important. And the opening line of the poem starts, For years afterwards the farmers found them. 
Um, there's not a lot of rhyme in this poem, but there is, is a lot of alliteration and assonance and sibilance. Um, and I suppose the focus of that opening line is the idea that the effect of war uh, on generations over time uh, is, is huge. And although World War I happened over 100 years ago now, um, the beginning of World War Run, it still has a hold over us. It still has a link uh, to our experiences, I suppose, of, of history. And the finding of these bodies, uh, these skeletons, uh, disrupts this sort of normal peacetime life that we've had um, in Europe for, I suppose, the last 50 50 odd years so the idea that World War One can still affect us it's still important it's still an important part of our our cultural memory it is indicated in that in that opening line so the idea for years afterwards even though the war's long gone these memories of World War One still reach up and, and touch us uh, and I think Owen is Owen Cheers is making the point that it's important for us to remember these people. It's important for us to remember their sacrifice because we're not living through wars at the moment in this country um, on the same scale as World War One, and so many men died um, that he he doesn't want us to forget that. The second quote I'm going to pick out, uh, which is from the end of the second stanza, is the blown and broken bird's egg of a skull. As I, say, I mean, it's a very startling image. It uses natural imagery, again tying in with the natural imagery of the title of the poem, Mamet's Wood. So throughout this poem, you've got a juxtaposition of natural imagery and obviously the violence of war, which uh, is similar in some ways to Bayonet Charge by Ted Hughes also um, a First World War poem written at a later time. Um, the alliteration is important because although the alliteration in the first line farmers found them is quite soft with the F sound uh, which is a fricative, the B sound which is a, a plosive is more abrupt and aggressive and violent and although the image of a bird's egg uh, is quite um, natural and suggests life the fact that you've got those aggressive B sounds with blown and broken and bird's egg and obviously the metaphor of the egg of a skull it suggests the fragility of those men's lives and it suggests the violence um, that ended their lives as well so this natural imagery and the alliteration um, kind of contrast and suggest the forgotten violence that you know, these skeletons remind us of. There's another natural imagery, uh, piece of imagery in, um, I think it's, uh, the third stanza, sorry. It's nesting machine guns. Again, that kind of carries on that image of, of the egg as a symbol of nature and life. Um, and then juxtaposed with obviously the skull which represents death and in this line from the third stanza you've got a nest nesting uh, which suggests again young life um, the beginnings of life juxtaposed with this idea of machine guns which were obviously a symbol of modernity war this was you know the first time machine guns were used on a massive scale um, and they are a symbol of you know modern 20th century destruction and mass murder um, that was evident in, in World War One. So again we've got this uneasy sense that in this natural beautiful landscape that Owen Shears finds himself he's reminded of the violence and disturbance uh, that World War One inflicted on, on these young men. So the images of the egg and the nest reminding us of how young these men were okay, um, who joined up often uh, with the idea that they were seeking glory. At the end of the poem, it's a quite a startling image, I suppose. Up until this point, we've had this sense that the the men are, are forgotten and they're slowly being refound through these fragments of bone. But then, in the last stanza, it's 
quite uplifting in a sense that we almost hear these men speak. Uh, so the ending stanza ends as if the notes they had sung have only now with this unearthing slipped from their absent tongues. So that the use of sensory language with the sound, notes sung and tongues, where you've got that half rhyme as well, um, suggesting, although these men can't speak, the image of their bodies arm in arm laying in, in this farmer's field dug up by the ploughs, it does actually allow them uh, to come to the surface, so to speak, and be remembered again. And in, in that sense, they are speaking again, singing. So there's a sense of, uh, along with, with the line, dance macabre, a sense of dancing and singing, that these young lives that were cut off short um, are now being remembered by Shears and in turn the reader through the reading of the poem. So in many respects it's a poem that memorialises um, the sacrifice soldiers made in, in World War I and reminds us of how disturbing and disruptive um, that war was and, and does so through the contrasting juxtaposition of violence and, and nature. On the right hand side I've just written something about line lengths. Uh, they mimic the uneven ground and, and the broken fragments that Shears sees of these bones and these skeletons. So the lines vary in length quite a lot. And they're almost the stanzas like layers of earth as well, slowly uncovering and allowing things to come to the surface. So in that sense the structure of the poem is quite important as well. In terms of which poems it can be compared to, I think you can contrast it to or compare it to Charge of the Light Brigade in terms of the sacrifice that men made. Uh, you can certainly make links with Bayonet Charge by Ted Hughes with this sense of um, the horror and disturbing nature of, and violent nature of war. Um, those, those two poems, I would argue, were, were quite good um, connections or connecting poems to look at in, in, in respect of Mamet's wood.